بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وسلم right honorable speaker Katsina State House of Assembly the deputy speaker the house leader our respected excellency the secretary to the state government the chief staff members of the state executive council dg media and other special senior special advisors or media permanent secretaries chairman of the nigerian union of journalists other members of the press ladies and gentlemen assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh I will crave your indulgence to give me a little time to address the people of Katsina State, Katsina and Dewarawa, on our hundred days in the current administration. Today, a lot of people have mentioned hundred years. I don't know. Every God will see me through hundred years. But I feel it is important to address the press and to address the people of Kazina. Not only because I believe in hundred days celebration. I don't believe in it. I don't support it. But I feel I should be accountable to the people of Kazina State towards the stewardship and the mandate given to me by the people of the state. On that note, I felt it is important to address the people of the state, to tell them what we have so far achieved and what we want to achieve in the future and the challenges that are confronting the administration. And before my address, I would also like to see this opportunity to thank the media family of Katsina State for supporting the administrations since it is inception. So, Chairman, we thank you. And I also want to thank the State Assembly for speedy actions on some of the bills that were sent to the State Assembly as well as the supplementary budget for 2023. I also want to thank the members of the administration, just at the cabinet and other level, the permanent secretaries, civil servant, for the support they have been given the administration. So fellow Katsunawa, the Dewarawa, today we gathered here to mark a significant milestone in our journey towards progress, development, a realization of a brighter future for Katsuna State. It is with great honor and humility that I address you on this momentous occasion as we witness the completion of the first 100 days of my tenure as a governor of this great state of Kazina. As I stand before you, I remain of an immense responsibility that has been entrusted upon me by the people of Kazina State. I'm actually aware of the challenges we face, but I'm equally optimistic about the opportunities that lie ahead. Over the past hundred days, my administration has tirelessly worked 
to lay the foundation of a new era of security, prosperity, and inclusive governance. During this short yet impactful period, we have embarked on a journey of transformation across the various sectors that are vital to the well-being of our citizens. Our approach has been one of the strategic planning engagement and partnership both within the state and beyond the borders of the state. Our commitment to transparency, accountability, and good governance is unwavering. We have taken significant steps to enhance public participation in decision-making process and to ensure that resources are managed efficiently, effectively for the benefit of all. I have constituted no less than 20 committees since our inauguration involving public and private officials to look into various areas of how we deliver for the people of Kazina State. As you may recall, my inclusiveness dates back to when I set up a blueprint committee which co-opted over 200 of our best and brightest to contribute to our building your future strategic policy. I also deliver on my campaign promises to allow the people in local government nominate suitable candidates for appointment in my, candidate, in my cabinet. The reason I have decided to mark the 100 days is not because it is becoming popular, but because it is necessary our people are facing unprecedented hardships and they deserve to know how we are laying the foundation that will bring ease to their lives. Some of the measures we have taken are immediately immediate, while others are long term. My administration campaigned on the public service administration reforms. And we are of the first exercise we conducted was a complete review of the mandates of all the ministries and departments and agencies to eliminate duplications and insufficiency in the system. The result led to realignment of various MDAs and identify the need for the creation of new ones. We created the Ministry of Internal Security and Home Affairs, Ministry of Higher Technical and Vocational uh, Education, and ICT Directorate to serve all MDAs and departments for public administration reforms. We also sent bills to the State Assembly for the creation of Katsina State Development Management Board, the first of its kind in the whole of the country. Katsina State Asset Management Agency to deal with all the assets of the states. Katsina State Irrigation Authority, Katsina State Enterprise Development Agency, and Katsina State Community Watch Corps. We have developed detailed plans to staff these new MDAs from our existing workforce to ensure cost efficiency in their setup. My administration faced systematic challenges beyond our control as a country battle with inflation due to the removal of oil subsidy from day one. We immediately responded by a prison price increment on government-owned public transportation services. We called a meeting with the labor union to understand the impact of work to workers and also meet with the Petroleum Marketers Association to better understand the effect on our people. Our effort to bring direct ease to people have been ongoing since then. The government expanded over 2 billion naira to provide maize and rice to people and recently provided 2.1 billion naira worth of rice as part of the federal government supported palliatives. We have purchased 40 buses to improve affordable public transportation in the state with 15 buses dedicated to interstate
transport within the Katsina metropolis. 25 for inter and intra state activities. Our social support to most vulnerable in our society will continue for the lifetime of my administration and we will continue to ensure that mechanisms are in place to provide health fairly and in timely manner. In the realm of education, we have been able to make significant progress. We identify education as key to our future building projects. And I am pleased to announce that we have provided 2.2 billion for the construction and rehabilitation of 300 and 61 primary schools in the state. We have launched and mobilized contractors for the construction of 75 secondary schools under the Agile program. Commission the first, we are commissioning the first three model schools promised during my campaign and tested for the recruitment of additional teachers into the service. The examination and the testing has already been conducted. In healthcare, we conducted a comprehensive need assessment in the sector and have begun taking steps to improve primary healthcare delivery in the state. And I have commissioned this morning two dialysis centers in the state to increase availability of dialysis beds from two to skistim beds. We have also provided 198 motorcycles for improved immunization in partnership with UNICEF. Our investment in healthcare will focus on efficient and affordable healthcare for the people at the primary healthcare centers. In agriculture, I began my tenure by visiting one of our agricultural extension schools at Capensoli and uh, Tambu in Daura. I'm pleased to announce that we have finalized we have finalized a new extension service program that will introduce extension farming and increase the number of extension workers from 72 to 600 as we prioritize agroeconomic development of our people. My administration has engaged extensively with various technology serving providers, service providers, to find the best solution and operating model for financial management in the state. I sign an executive order to implement a treasury single account for transparency and we have finalized plan to build a technology platform that will best serve the needs of the people in tax management, central billing, budget and planning, and expenditure tracking. The issue of insecurity is of paramount importance to my administration, and we have attacked it head on. The creation of the Ministry of Internal Security and Katsina State Community Watch Corps was the beginning of institutionalizing our strategy to deal with insecurity. We have recruited so far 1,500 community watch officers from the eight frontline local governments to empower our people to defend themselves. I enacted a security challenge containment order and set up an advisory committee on security in the state. My administration has expanded over 7 billion Naira to procure armored personnel carriers, 65 Hilux vehicles, 700 motorcycles, provide training for the community watch corps officers, and other security equipment and majors I cannot disclose in this address. We have fought insecurity from day one, and we will do so in perpetuity to guarantee the safety of lives and property of our people. 
We have provided support to victims of banditry by providing free medical care and money transfer to support livelihood to the victims. We have partnered with UNDP to establish a climate hub, peace hub and preventive facilities with a pilot project in Gibia to help reverse the trend insecurity in the state has created. My administration has got much more than I can provide in this address. We have completed various water supply projects, met with investors, and gained ground in soft infrastructure that will make the policy implementation achievable. We have submitted a supplementary budget to the State Assembly to deal with new realities and have gained ground in pension reforms, among others. I would like to appeal to the citizens of Katana State to exercise a beautiful patience as we continue to deliver on our mandate in the best interest of the people of the state. As we review these initial accomplishments, let us not forget that the road ahead is long and demanding. The challenges we face require collective efforts and dedication from all various sectors of the society. I urge each and every one of, of you to join hands with my administration in building a Katsina state that we can all be proud of, a state that thrives on unity, progress, and shared prosperity. In conclusion, I extend my heartfelt congrat gratitude to the people of Katsina state for their trust and support. I also acknowledge the efforts of our dedicated civil servant, partner organization, well wishes, traditional rulers, the State Assembly, and members of my team who have contributed to the achievement of this first 100 days. Let us move forward with determination, resilience, and a shared vision of a brighter future for Katsina State. Thank you and God bless you. I will come to that. I will now take you over item by item on some of our reforms. Public Service Administration Reform. We have conducted exams for the appointment of permanent secretary invited all qualified directors in the state civil service to participate in the process. Exams included three days training of intensive training and candidates were tested on materials they were taught. The entire process was handed, handled by the external independent consultant with extensive experience in civil service recruitment and promotion at the federal level. The appointees were largely unknown to the governor personally and were appointed entirely on merit. The process was designed to set a tune for merit-based appointment and promotion in the civil service in line with the reforms agenda of the administration conducted mandate mapping exercise through the MDAs, assessed the mandate of all the MDAs in the state to eliminate inefficiencies and discover gaps, led to the collapse of over 10 departments back to their ministries. I identified the need to create two new ministries which I have mentioned earlier, lead to the establishment of new agencies whose mandate to deliver key policy objectives. The exercise will set the tune for the functional mapping and reforms across the, all the MDAs, creation of the new MDAs. The new MDAs will not add to the cost of governance in the significant manner as it will use existing resources personnel, resource persons and assets. New recruitment will be informed by identified skills, competency which cannot, which cannot currently be filled 
by the workforce. Each new MDA will have a specific objectives it must achieve and will be reviewed annually for effectiveness. We are confident that the people will feel the impact of the new agencies in tangible and intangible ways. Establishment of Katsuna State Development Management Board. It signifies a dedicated agency focused on strategic planning and efficient execution of development projects in the states. This board will streamline and coordinate the developmental effort, ensure resources are maximized and projects are completed on time within budget to enhance accountability, transparency and effectiveness in achieving its socio-economic goals. This reflects a commitment to responsible government, governance and sustainable development benefiting the state's residents and future generations. The State Development Management Board will play a vital role in fostering a more prosperous and well-managed future for the state. Establishment of Kazan State Irrigation Authority. This will revolutionize agriculture by providing sustainable water resources, boosting crop yields, and ensuring food security for the state. This authority will facilitate efficient water management practices, reducing reliance on rain-paid agriculture and mitigating the effect of climate variation. By focusing on irrigation, Katana State is taking a significant step toward economic diversification, job creation, poverty reduction in the agricultural sector. The authority will promote responsible water, responsive water use minimize wastage and enhance the overall productivity and resilience of farming communities. Establishment of Katana State Irrigation Authority demonstrates a commitment to modernizing agriculture and transforming the state into an agricultural power house. The agricultural master plan is being, uh, is being processed as I speak to you. Establishment of Katana State Asset Management Agency. This will ensure efficient management, utilization, and maintenance of state assets and optimizing their value for the benefit of the public. This agency will centralize asset tracking and maintenance, reducing waste and ensuring long term sustainability of valuable state resources. By enhancing asset management practices, Katana State is demonstrating. It is commitment to fiscal responsibility and accountable governance. The Fiscal Accountability Commission also is in the process of being formed. The agency will safeguard state assets, promote transparency, contribute to overall economic stability and growth in the state. The establishment of Katana State Asset Management reflects a strategic approach to maximize the value of public asset for the well-being of its citizens. Establishment of Katana State ICT Directorate. This demonstrates a commitment to harnessing the power of technology for improved governance, service delivery, and economic growth within the state. This ICT Directorate will spearhead digital transformation efforts, making government services more accessible and efficient for residents and businesses. By investing in information and communication technology, Katsuna State is positioning itself to complete on the global scale and attract tech-driven investment. The directorate formation reflects a forward-looking approach to enhancing digital literacy, connectivity, and innovation across the state. The state ICT directorate will play a pivotal role in creating a knowledgeable, knowledge-based economy, driven economic development and job creation in the digital age, the establishment of Department for Public Administration Reforms. This underscores Katsuna State commitment to enhancing government efficiency, transparency, and service delivery. This department will drive comprehensive reform to streamline government processes reduce bureaucracy and improve public sector performance. 
by focusing on public administration reform, Kazakhstan State aims to create a more responsive, accountable government that better serves its citizens. The department formation reflects a dedication to good governance practice, ultimately benefiting residents and promoting economic development. Kazakhstan State Department of Public Administration Reform will play a pivotal role in modernizing the state public service and fostering a culture of continuous improvement. Establishment of Katsina State Enterprise Development Agency. This signifies a dedicated body focused on fostering the entrepreneurship, innovation, and economic growth within the state. This agency will provide essential support and resources to aspiring entrepreneurs and existing businesses promoting job creation and economic diversification. By facilitating access to capital training and market opportunities, Katsina State aims to empower its citizens to become self-reliant and financially independent. The agency formation reflects a commitment to driving economic development, reducing unemployment, and enhancing the overall well-being of the state residents. Kazan State Enterprise Agency will play a pivotal role in creating vibrant entrepreneurial ecosystem, spurring innovation and investment in the region. Interventions in education. The government has approved award for construction of new schools under the Agile program, 75, as I mentioned. Intervention in 361 primary schools, providing an upgrade, including general renovation, construction of new primary school blocks, and water supply by construction of boreholes and furnitures. Approve the release of this 2.7 billion for the Agile project which the project has commenced, and within the week we are going to lay a foundation for the beginning of the project. This will signify expand education opportunities and ensure access to quality education. Reduce overcrowding in the existing facility, leading to the more conducive learning environment and improve academic performance. Laying the foundation for a more educated skilled workforce, which is vital for Kazakhstan's socio-economic development. It underscores the state commitment to providing equal education opportunities and bridging education gap across the region. It will also enhance the state capacity to prepare its youth for future challenges and opportunities contributing to their personal growth and the growth of the state. Establishment of three pioneer model schools, in one in each senatorial zone as we have promised people during our campaign. Foundation laying ceremony will be conducted on Saturday in Jikamshi town of Funtua zone and Damarkul town in Daura zone. This demonstrates a commitment to delivering higher quality education tailored to the diverse needs of students across the need. These model schools will serve as exemplary institutions, setting the standard for education, ed educational excellences in the state. It creates equitable access to top tier education, reducing re regional disparity in education opportunity. It signifies Katana State dedication to fostering innovation, modern teaching practice, and it is educational system. And admission in those schools will be purely on merit. <laughs> Intervention under health, I mentioned, establishment of two dialysis centers, upgrade the condition of the two, only two dialysis centers in the state, increase the number of functioning dialysis machine from 2 to 16, locate one in Katana and one in Daura to ease accessibility. One in Katana and one in Funtua to ease accessibility. Distribution, as I mentioned, of the tricycles for the routine immunization exercise in collaboration with UNICEF 
it has already been uh, distributed. Establishment of the Federal College, Federal University of Health in Kazuna State. As we are all aware, the federal government has approved the establishment of the Federal Health University of Health in Kazuna State to provide training, producing skilled health and professionals to serve the community. This institution will enhance the state health care service by providing well-trained nurses, medical doctors, laboratories. The college will, the university will contribute to reducing shortage of health workers in the state. It is establishment demonstrate the government commitment to invest in education and health. The Federal University of Health align with the national efforts strengthen the health work and uh, temporary side for the federal university of health have been provided by the Katsuna state government and also a permanent site was identified and is going to be transferred for them to construct the new site for the university located in Funtua. Infrastructure and works. We are aware that there exists in the state a Crystal project, which is a World Bank and IDA project. Phase one has been completed in Kazuna Metropolis and GBA town. The second phase of the project was signed and our administration was able to pay 30% mobilization, which amount to about 6.6 .6 billion to the contractors and the work has already commenced, both in Katsina and Gibia. You are aware that there was a project approved by the previous administration of General Muhammad Buhari for the upgrade of the Umaru Musa Radua Airport to international standard. Compensation has already been paid by our administration to the tune of 283 million for the land to be used for the expansion project. Upgrading Umaru Musa Radua to international standard will boost regional and international connectivity, promoting economic growth and tourism in the region. This transformation will enhance the airport capacity to handle larger aircraft accommodating the increasing passengers and cargo demands. The upgrade will improve the overall travel experience including immigration and custom facilities making it more convenient for international travels. By meeting international standards, the airport will attract foreign airlines and investment contributing to economic development of the state and the nation. This project underscores the commitment of infrastructural development, positioning Katana State as a key player in the global transportation network. Sawash projects. This morning we were able to visit sites and we have seen the progress of the work so far done. Some were completed, some were at 80% completion stage to improve distribution and supply of water in Katsina metropolis and environs, including Batagara, our local government. Katsina Community Watch Corps. To enhance the local security effort, promote community involvement in addressing insecurity challenges in the state, or to collaborate with the local law enforcement to provide valuable support in intelligence gathering and criminal prevention, crime prevention. To leverage on local knowledge and resources proactively address security concerns and reduce the impact of insecurity in the state. To align with the government commitment to comprehensive security strategy that include community-driven initiatives. To demonstrate Katana State commitment to addressing insecurity through innovative community orientation solutions. After my address, we'll just sign the law that was passed by the State Assembly for the establishment of the Community Watch Corps. Security expenditures. 
expenditure was based on the report of the Advisory Committee on Security. All item purchases have a clear link to providing support in the fight against insecurity. Justification will be clear as the impact is felt by the affected communities in the near future. Security goes beyond spending money and several non-kinetic approaches are being implemented to achieve success. I cannot disclose much of what has been done due to the sensitive nature of the project. Acrisal tree planting campaign. As we are aware of the challenges of environmental impact on our climate, commissioning, we are to we are going to commission the tree planting under the Acrifal project in Umaru Musa Radua College of Legal Studies in Naura in the following days to come. Establishment of Acrifal training planting in Katana STEM has to combat desertification, environmental degradation, and beautifying and also enhancing agricultural resources. This initiative will engage community in sustainable tree planting practices, empowering them to take an active role in environmental conservation. Social support. As I mentioned earlier, 40 voices for the State Transport Authority were purchased, and within the week we are going to launch those 40 voices. And I have identified that 15 of the buses will be for interstate services, intercity services, and the 25 will be for intra and interstate services, in addition to the existing fleet we had. Distribution of palliatives. You know, distribution of palliatives is not a permanent solution to the current challenges facing our people. Well, it's just an effort to mitigate the effect of removal of foil subsidy on our citizens. We have directed local government, they have since purchased 36,100 bags of maize, which were distributed 100 bags across all the 361 wards in the state. And uh, I speak to you today the 40,000 bags of rice that were purchased for distribution to each polling unit, 6,652 6, polling units that we have in the state, was launched last weekend by the deputy governor of the state. And subsequent distribution of the other rice to all the local government in the state is in progress. Ladies and gentlemen, I wouldn't want to bore you with all what we have done. I want to use this opportunity to thank all of you for having time to be with us today and listening to us, and also for having the ability to inform the people of the state on what we have so far achieved, challenges we are facing, and what we intend to do in the future of our administration. We thank you very much, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen.